Okay, I'd like to welcome you guys to this week's report. Um, today is Thursday. We've got a little bit of weather happening right now. I'm sorry I'm a day late with this report, but I tried to take advantage of the lack of weather yesterday to fish, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, looks like we have pretty good fishing weather in the forecast in most areas, and uh, the fish are biting. So uh, let's head up to the map and see what's happening. All right, starting up the Channel Islands. Uh, it is going to be a little bit windy up there this weekend. Uh, I think that Rosa and I don't know if Miguel's fishable, but Rosa and the west end of Santa Cruz should be sport boat fishable. It's going to be kind of windy though, so be aware of that. Um, the areas where they're catching sea bass and halibut and calvin and stuff like that is uh, kind of in the lee, but it's still going to be a little breezy, so if you're a private boater heading up there, I would uh, keep a close look on the uh, forecast before heading out. But uh, So yeah, the big news up there is uh, halibut with some sea bass. You know, you would expect there to be more sea bass with us coming into this uh, full moon here on the 5th. Uh, Friday, but um, not so much so far. That may be due to weather, um, <clears throat> keeping guys out of the areas that are biting, or maybe it just has the water temps dropping. Uh, it's been a lot of wind up there lately, so who knows? Uh, it can only improve, and I think that uh, this weekend you might have a pretty good shot at catching both halibut and sea bass up there. If you uh, strike out, the rock fishing is continuing to be really good up there. Boats targeting them are doing real well at the islands and also along the coast. And the, uh, the calicos are starting to bite up there as well. My friend Larry Heron had a trip up there this last weekend. It did pretty good. Got some nice calico bass. So that's, uh, that's good to see. That's a fun spring fishery up there. If you're a bass fisherman, you might want to get up there and check it out. A lot of uh, really nice fish up that way. Uh, heading down to uh, San Nick and a dirt clod. Uh, rockfish are biting at Nick. Not getting a lot of coverage. I uh, haven't heard of any other species being caught out there, but there might be sea bass or yellows or halibut to be caught out there as well. I don't know if this weekend is going to be the weekend to do it because it's be kind of breezy. But uh, the fish are still biting at Santa Barbara Island. Uh, they're getting halibut, sea bass, rockfish, a little bit of everything. Uh, you need squid to catch halibut and sea bass, but the semi overnight boat's been fishing out there and doing pretty well. I know the Freedom had some nice fish the other day. I'm assuming they were up there. Um, should be plenty fishable weather-wise uh, for sport boats. Again, private boaters, I'd take a look at the forecast before heading out. Might be a better day to go out there. Um, heading out to Clemente, the, uh, there's not been a lot of coverage at the island. The only boat that's been out there lately I know is the Fury, and they had some good yellowtail fishing. Um, they're getting those on squid. I also saw they had a nice fish on a, it looked like a yo-yo iron, which is pretty common this time of year out there. Um, scrambled egg jig. You know, you could fish a yo-yo iron or you could fish a, a, a surface iron that you cast out, let it sink to the bottom, and then retrieve it at like a 45 degree angle. That's a, that's a real good trick out there when they're on squid sometimes. Uh, they're also getting some halibut out there. Really good rock fishing uh, when, they're, when the weather permits and they get off the island. It's, I mean, it's uh, excellent, big reds, everything else. I know the, uh, I don't know about the Fury schedule at Dana Point, but I know the Thunderbirds online, they've got a couple of openings on, I think Saturday, Friday and Saturday night, so if you want to go do that, check it out. Um, it's going to be breezy out there all day, but not too bad for a sport boat, really. You know, they're calling for like 13 knots of wind, something like that. Probably just, you know, just where it's a little too rough for a skiff to head out there, but uh, I think it's going to be plenty fishable for sport boats. Uh, heading into Catalina, the island's really starting to bite. Uh, I know the three-quarter boats like the Native Sun are getting halibut there and Bonita. I know the Freelance and the boats fishing the East End are doing really well on Bonita. Um, I'm sure the Calicos are biting everything else. Uh, still some sea bass, yellows on the back in the squid area, but uh, really haven't heard much about that this week. I think most of the guys that are doing that keep their tight lips about the whole thing. But, uh, you know, and it's good rock fishing out there. You got to fish pretty deep to catch fish, but... Uh, there's good rock fishing at, you know, 450 to 600 foot depth range as well. Uh, so if you're heading out on a sport boat and you plan to fish rock fish, I would bring a, a appropriate tackle, maybe some 24 ounce sinkers, and a good sized reel full of 30 pound braid would uh, really help you out with uh, getting the, your bait sand to the bottom, and keeping contact with your line, not in a, in a big tangle like uh, those guys are dealing with a lot of that. But uh, I might go to Catalina this weekend, Saturday, depending. Um, try and... Uh, uh, Jimmy Decker and I are trying to, to do some uh, fishing for the Balboa Angling Club where we fish light line. So we're, if uh, weather permitting and he's off work, we're going to go over there and try and fish two, four, and six pound for uh, Bonita 
and whatever else we can catch for the uh, Balboa England Club points thing for their England of the Year deal they have going on there. Um, speaking of that, we uh, fished the Newport Pipe on Saturday and had really good bass fishing. You know, we probably had 70 plus fish and, you know, three or four hours of fishing. And uh, all those were on four pound tests. Well, 90% of them were um, little small swim baits, you know, a light spinning rod and a uh, four pound, a lot of fun. And the reason we're doing that is we, we, you know, so they have these line categories. So if you get a two pound fish on two pound, you get a, a point towards the angler of the year thing, four pound fish on four pound, six pound fish on six pound. Uh, we got a, we didn't get any four pounders last week. We had, I think our, Jimmy got like a three, three and a half pound or three and a quarter pound sand bass. And I got a two pound something calico on four pound. But uh, you know, if you never fish light line, it's actually kind of a fun thing to do. And I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to doing more of it this weekend. Um, after that, well, Sunday I ran out the PV and uh, you know, for the first time this year, saw some really good sign up there of what's to come during summer. You know, the water warmed up to 60 degrees. The current was running in the right direction. And, um, we had fish biting high in the water columns. We had fish on hard baits. We had a few bites on the weedless. Um, the fish were active. You know, we had uh, a lot of fish Sunday. I don't remember exactly how many. Uh, Matt topped it off with this uh, this nice fish. He got it firm at the end of the day. But uh, that's not an early morning thing. We, you know, leave at like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning and then head out there. Um, went back up yesterday and, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys heard about the Explorer dive boat, but they, uh, Somehow that thing ended up on the rocks at Furman and uh, broke apart completely. So there was oil and diesel and all kinds of junk everywhere and it just looked really ugly. Add to that we had red tide and uh, in the areas that weren't red tide it was gin clear water with 20 plus feet of visibility. It made for some, uh, for some tough fishing but the uh, caught, caught fish anyway. You know we didn't knock them dead. We probably had 20 fish in about three hours but um, very small isolated spots and you know I, I started shooting GoPro on the boat and um, I shot this little video here. It's about a four minute video um, but it kind of talks about what I've spoken about on expanding on what you're seeing condition wise and you know I'm gonna start it up here. Alright, let me get Kath right in here. A little kelp, just uh, one string at least. That one? Yeah. Nice. You know, right where the birds were. So as you can see here, we uh, pulled up on these stringers and there was a couple of birds looking and uh, Matt threw the, uh, the crankbait up, a, up along those stringers and immediately caught a fish and uh, obviously cast back to the same spot because that's normally what's been happening here. These fish are grouped up. But uh, in the meantime, um, I saw some stringers outside of the boat so I made a, uh, a long cast to those and I got bit first cast. Here I come up to the bow and um, again not a big fish. I mean we didn't really get any big ones on uh, on Wednesday, but fish come to eat, eat the crank bit. It's a bomber, fat free shad, and the old Bill Dance version that Brandon Volkamon likes to make fun of me for. But uh, so since I caught that fish there, I just went ahead and made a, a cast to the same spot again. And now I get bit again. You can see my retrieve here. Wine went pause, wine went pause, when went pause, when went bite. And um, these fish are, uh, have been keyed in on that presentation lately. I'm not sure exactly why, but this, you know, the, like I said earlier, it was just bad conditions everywhere. We found this little pocket of water between red tide and gin clear that had birds and bait and biting bass. Um, so now we've caught three fish on this one spot, and the normal thought process would be to, hey, let's just. Uh, fish this area here and keep casting but what it is we realized that I realized that we just came up on the on the back side of this thing here and I could tell by because neither of us get a, a bite the next cast I and mean, we get three fish and basically four casts 
And then we both make a cast and you have to catch anything. So that tells me that we're not we're not on the meat of this or we could be on a spot better. Birds are still up seen flying around. So I decided that, hey, I'm gonna run out to the outside edge of this and see if I can't uh get on these fish a little bit better and uh take advantage of it. Outside kelp. What's that? I think it's this outside kelp here that we were drifting. I'm not making a huge move here. I'm basically just swinging the boat out about 20, 30 feet and repositioning it toward the outside up, up current stingers or the spot was going in and down in towards the beach and or uphill. So I'm getting on the uh, up current edge of it and sliding the boat around. And you know, as you can see, I'm not going very far. I'm just repositioning so we can take full advantage of casting those stringers. And you can see one going by the boat right now. You don't want to go fast, just kick the boat ahead gear and then tell Matt to go ahead and cast. No. I'm driven through it. No thanks. You're hitting on these stringers here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Video too. The tugger. The oh god, look at all the bass. Wow, look at all the bass down there. Holy mackerel. 30 fish right? on that. There was 30 fish on that fish. Okay, so finishing up, let's head down south and look at San Diego. You know, the uh, that offshore bite is still happening. Um, and they're biting in a few areas, but the best fishing is still pretty far away. So you're going to want to do like a day and a half trip if you're going to get on, you know, get a good shot at catching a bluefin. Some of those fish are biting at night, mostly, and uh, some of the ones that are biting today are not too close to home. I know the uh, full day boats like the Liberty and the San Diego had been, and the Grande had been uh, running trips and catching bluefin earlier in the week, but it's been mostly just yellowtail and some big bonita for them in recent days. But uh, again, we have the full moon tomorrow, and uh, there's always an opportunity that uh, that stuff could uh, kick back off here. Um, the nighttime fishing is still with jigs and the daytime is fly line baits and maybe small casting jigs but uh, nothing's really changed there. It's pretty pretty uh, predictable fishery. You just need to find the fish and they bite the same stuff all the time. Um, I've heard of private boaters going out and trolling around with uh, Mad Max, spreader bars and stuff catching some fish but uh, haven't heard much sign of that service tuning yet, so I'm going to continue to hold off until I can uh, go and cast a lure or something. But, uh, you know, those fish are up in U.S. waters now as well, so if you're uh, going somewhere far, maybe not this weekend because of the weather, but if you're going to Clemente or whatever, I definitely have something available to uh, be ready to cast on a tuna with. I know that stuff's still quite a ways below Clemente, but uh, it could slide up pretty quickly. In that water, there's nothing really, no boundary, top boundary holding those fish in a certain area. So there, I think there's more fish than we know. Um, in U.S. waters already, just a lack of people out looking. Um, so I was getting kind of long because I showed that video, so I'm going to cut it off here, but uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend and good luck if you fish.